Life is filled with goodbyes, a million goodbyes, and it hurts every time. Sometimes I feel like I've lost so much. I have to find new things to lose. All I know is most people's lives are a great disappointment to them and no one leaves this earth without feeling terrible pain. And if there's no divine explanation at the end of it all, well, that's sad. This week, we discuss the film that I just quoted, Eve's Bayou. Joining us for her first main show appearance, but not her first appearance on the pod, we welcome... Hi, I'm Joy. I'm Matt. I'm Chad. And you've summoned the 149th episode of your award-winning podcast. We used to talk about this at work. So I don't know how this is going to go down, but there might be some some noise in the background on the final episode, you know, on the final product here, because they're doing some work outside my apartment. Um, I want to say since like we had like heavy rain in November, there's just been like standing water on my parking lot. Mm -hmm. And when we had our winter storm, like back in what January, it became ice. And so it melted when it got a little bit warmer, but it's just been standing water. So the water company's finally out here and it's almost March. And they're probably about work- right for the government. Yeah. So they're working at, at, at time of recording, seven thirty PM on a Saturday. So you know this is triple overtime. Right. All right. Yeah. But um yeah, so we've got a new guest this week, Joy. Hey there, miss. But I guess well, you're not a, a you're you're a new guest for the main show. Yes. But we did that uh, Murder at the End of the World video uh, December. I think so, yeah. Before yeah. Cri- before Christmas, we recorded at my house. Yeah. yeah, that did some really good numbers. So you're here right here now on the couch, in the, live in the studio, you know. It was such a good <laughs> show, too. But no, so um, that was a good show. And, you know, we had a good back and forth. So I was like, you know what, Joy? Come through. Let's 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 do a, okay. just do a regular episode. Meet Matt and all that stuff. Um, you you told me something that do you want to share it with Matt? What? What'd you tell me? That Matt's laugh makes me laugh. Yeah. Yes, I crack up when I listen to the show. Cause you crack me up. Oh, your laugh is better than you. Chad's. No offense. Oh, to Chad. I've, I've never heard fine. that, so I appreciate it. Thank you. A couple weeks ago. We, when we were talking about our Mr. and Mrs. Smith um, analysis, if you will, mm-hmm. uh, Matt and I talked about how at one point Donald Glover's character said to his partner, I want to put a baby in you while they were being intimate. And I would like your take on that. Um, not my favorite. Never had a breeding kink never cared about that kind of thing what I, is, what is that breeding kink mm-hmm. is where you want somebody to say something like that to you regardless of whether or not it is actually happening you know what i mean okay so um that's what that would be called is a breeding kink okay and no it doesn't really i mean okay it doesn't do anything for me but i know some women it does like check the boxes so as the first woman we've had on the microphone um since we've since that episode what do you think the psychology of that is like what i'm trying to say is speak for all women oh duh i think it has to do with honestly you go so much of your life with sex trying to avoid pregnancy You know what I'm saying? Okay. Like you're on the pill, you use kind of whatever you use. Um, And I think like for some couples or, you know, the person saying it or the person hearing it, it's like a forbidden type of thing to talk about. Interesting. Taboo. Yeah, kind of. Like, because you try so hard not to get pregnant when you have sex, usually. That somebody saying that is just very primal and very like, you know. Okay. passionate okay passionate i don't i didn't finish mrs mr and mrs smith yet did you get to that episode no okay i think that's I episode. i don't know if i can hear donald glover saying that though i think that's episode five they have really good chemistry though they do they do in that show i mean he's 
Mm, he's amazing. Yes. Matt, you, you, you've been grimacing for a while since we started this conversation. Well, no, because I, I, I'm not trying to kink shave nobody, but I, I didn't know that was a thing. Um, I love breeding, that. It's breeding, just like, it's breeding, just, breeding kinks. Uh, that's just like when people are like, I'm not a racist, but. I mean, hey, man, if you like it, I love it. I mean, if that, I just didn't know that was a thing. I, and that's um, the thing I feel like you everything's can do that a thing. over here. Apparently, yes. <laughs> it is. It is. You you didn't think that people were into Oh, they are. Yeah. yeah. The grossest thing you can think of, double it. Yeah. And they're into that too. It's a it's, it's a, a lot. It's a wild world out here, man. It's people wild. That is Yeah, people are Well, I wouldn't say that, Joy. Willing to try things? People sometimes have to go over the limit to feel something that is i would agree with that too yes yeah but anyway speaking of feeling things joy you are a singer i am and you were kind enough to give me a ticket to go to a concert you performed in i did and i just want to say you know before we get into like your side of things like i was just like very happy like, you know, you were like, hey, Chad, you're my friend. I'd like you to come out, support your girl. I'm like, I got you. I get up in there. Like, I got seats almost on the stage, man. And I'm like, this is how you treat people. Exactly. Like, 100%. I, if I'm going to come and support you, don't have me in the, in, in the balconies. Apparently, the sound is better in the balcony. I can see that with the acoustics and stuff. But also, you got you got the, you the run the risk of getting um, Lincoln and shit. You know what I'm saying? In the balcony. They don't have true. boxes it, off it, to it, the side. It did happen like that. Um, uh, I'm sorry. So concert. Um, tell us about that. What? So have you always been a singer, Joy? Yes. So I started singing when I was really tiny, and my mom was a music teacher and a piano, a pianist, and did the church choir and stuff. And so I started singing when I was like two or three at church, just all the time. And so this is new for me i stopped singing for a long time um you know your kids are little you work you don't do a lot Life. of extracurricular Life. Yeah. stuff and i in i think it was august i saw that the symphony chorus here in st louis was having auditions and i work with somebody who sings for the symphony chorus and he was like you should audition and just see if what happens and I amazingly got asked to return, which I couldn't even believe. But this concert was so much more fun than the last one, too. I think just having to do with like who the conductor was and like the piece that we did and everything. It was it was a lot of fun to put on. And I had a lot more people like come and see it, too, than the last one. I didn't really know what to expect with the last one because it's my first concert. This yeah. one was more like a just a fun thing to do. As far as your um, singing ability, if you had to rate yourself from Whitney Houston to Jennifer Lopez, <laughs> where would you say oh, you're, wow. you're at? Oh, wow. Whoa. Well, I'm not Whitney, ever. No one can ever be, period. But I'm better than J-Lo. Hey. Damn, she went, she went swiping. She went swiping. I mean. No, th th I respect that. I respect that. J-Lo is a great dancer. Yeah, I didn't even send her that thing either, man. <laughs> and I'm very happy for her when she is in a movie when and it does success, well. Yeah. But she doesn't need to sing too. I agree. She could let that go for somebody else. Hey, her love don't cost a thing. It... And that was probably the last song I liked. <laughs> you didn't like Booty with her and Iggy Azalea? No, I I literally heard that once. I think with you, and I was like, is this Iggy Azalea? <laughs> yeah, I guess it is. I mean, like I liked her and Shakira's. Super Bowl show, but it wasn't my favorite one of all time. Which one was your favorite? Prince, hands down, in the ring. Oh yeah, that is the and best. He, had, he had that rap on too because <laughs> Prince, Prince Harris is not gonna get out of place. <laughs> and the twins are dancing behind him in the rain, like wearing like twelve inch heels and stuff. It that is that was a good show. It's, he's got the big cover thing that he's behind and he does it. Yeah, that is that was a good show. It rained like at the perfect time and he just whips his scarf off and plays Purple Rain. I mean, you can't come close to that. It's like Whitney singing the the Star Spangled Banner. Mm -hmm. It's the best mm -hmm. version of that. And 
no one will ever come close. And most people, you know, do what Fergie did and completely butcher it. So <laughs> I, I was that not one. impressed. I was not <laughs> impressed with Reba's uh, national anthem. I she's a very strong accent. <laughs> Fair, fair. I mean, it's like the, you know, is it Whitney or J-Lo? I, You're J-Lo. I'm not. I'm. <laughs> if Whitney is like the five, yeah. I'm going to say Adele is the four. Okay. And I'm going to put myself at like a two or a three on that scale too. Okay. So, all right. That's that's respectable, Joy. But I was happy that you came. I was I was glad that so many people got to come and see it and have a good time and i was, i i appreciate being invited and i appreciated that you know my cussy stuff lined up to where yeah. you know it wasn't a big deal for me to come out so it was it was nice it was a nice evening um so you guys did carmela Car- uh, carmina carmina Barana is that, what it's called it's like an opera right the whole piece uh it's a coral work large-scale choral work mm. it used to be performed Don't as an know opera what that word means just a song for a chorus of mixed voices to okay. sing. Okay. Um, it used to be performed with costumes and sets and dances and full things. And nobody does that anymore. Cause it's hard. Fair. It's just easier to dress up in black and stand <laughs> there and it. sing it. Yeah. So, uh, so basically I'm not going to sing anything, but uh, I, I went in not expecting to know what I was listening to, but then like, I'm like, okay, I've heard these songs in so many movies and TV mm-hmm. shows. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it is. So, yeah, especially that first main piece, which yeah. is, and it's a good piece because it, it, not all the the parts of it are the same. Some of them are soft and pretty pieces, and then some of them are very harsh and you know, yeah, loud. And so it it's a good. It was a good concert to go to. I'm glad you went. Yeah, I appreciate you. What's the next concert? The next concert is actually Wednesday. Mm. Of this week, we are singing just one small piece. It's like a 20-minute piece, and it's a concert at the Cathedral Basilica. I don't know what that is. It's a big, fancy Catholic church in the fancy-ish part of town-ish. So, Ledoux? Yeah. Yeah. (laughs) I think the Basilica is, or is it in New City? I don't remember. But it's a great, big, giant church, and we all have to stand around in this big church and sing. It's going to be... Sounds fun. Apparently, there's like a seven second delay. Like you sing, and then you hear it bounced back to you seven oh, seconds later. That's yeah, cool. people are really not looking forward to it. Yeah, I don't think I would want my voice bouncing back at me, even though you can hear your voice right now as you speak. I know. Yeah. We need these. We need to have some microphones, but we don't have them. I'm get sorry. Get the um. T- tell them to get the head the headphones. That's what. Can, it is. can we borrow? Yeah. Your stuff, Chad. Uh, how how many you guys need? Um, there's 120 singers. I got y'all. I got y'all. And probably Good question. Um, you don't have to say the exact number. I'm just curious. Uh, like, do you guys, like, how much you get paid for something like this? If you just give me a ballpark number. <laughs> so I don't get paid. Oh. Um, they do have. <laughs> you deflated Matt quickly. <laughs> they do have positions in the choir that are paid positions. Generally speaking, those are going to be your fresh out of college singers. Probably mostly men. Because those are the people you can't find. Um, so they do auditions and have people come in for paid positions. But most people are there in a volunteer capacity. So you're just, it's one rehearsal on Tuesday nights. And then I think four total concerts throughout the year. Oh. So it's not oh. terrible commitment. It is a lot the week of performance. Because we have several rehearsals leading up to it. So And two, okay. two performances. Mm. So. Okay. Which, that was weird. Saturday, I felt like the performance went better. Okay. And I kind of wish that you had come on Saturday and seen that one. But what are you going to do? You don't know until you do it. Yeah. I've never been in a situation where I've done more than one concert. Usually, it's just preparing for one, and then you do it, and it's great, Mm -hmm. and everybody loves it, and off you go. But this is very interesting. I bet. It's weird. (laughs) <laughs> Sunday was much more relaxed. Okay. Saturday night was much more exciting, much more electric to mm-hmm. me. It felt like um, it was his for the conductor's first time like doing this piece too. You could really tell. And Sunday he was just kind of like, "We're here. We're gonna have fun." So, hmm. 
speaking from having a good time to a bad time um all right let me let me be honest with you guys Okay. madam webb is not as bad as the internet is making it out to be okay that's a that's solid, surprising yes um they're making it to seem like it's the worst movie ever and things like that i think like you know once it hits the internet people wants to shit on something so let's join in and shit on them yeah now was this a good movie fuck no it wasn't it, it was not a good movie at all but it's not it's a it's a bad movie but it's not as bad as people <laughs> make it out to be, <laughs> if, if, if that makes sense. But not quite as bad as you think it's going to be. Right. It's it's bad, but it's not as, like, when I watched it, it wasn't like, oh, man, I want my money back. It was, all right, well, Madam Webb can see the future. <laughs> I wish these writers could have saw the future. Oh, no. <laughs> and would have realized this is no bueno. No this bueno. Ain't this ain't it. And the trailer, you know how like apps on your phone or Twitter or Facebook, they'll show you like a little preview of a game. And then when you download a game, it's not like that at all, right? <laughs> yes. <laughs> like that game then, where like they're, oh, uh, like, like the guy's like mining or something like that. Yeah. And then, yeah. And this, and then like people had tried to sue these companies for lying. They need, the trailer is misleading as hell. Really? In no point in this movie do the three women don these costumes. They are all kids, teenagers. So basically it boils down to like this, to where Madam Web Mama, she's in the jungle trying to find this um she was, in the, she was in the Amazon studying spiders when she was pregnant or some, something stupid right, right there from the trailer. Well, she, she, she was in the Amazon being pregnant, trying to find a spider with abilities to heal people or whatever. So she finds the spider. Then the bad guy is like, no, I want the spider. Shoots uh, Madam Webb's mama. And she gives birth into the um, blah, blah, blah. gets crazy from there. So fast forward <laughs> into the future or to the per present day. Um, the villain is like, oh, I'm having visions of the future where uh, I'm going to be killed by these three people, these three women. So I need to go out and kill them now before they kill me. And that's how Men on Web gets involved. But, like, he's donning a Super or Spider-Man outfit as he's doing stuff. It's just, it's real convoluted to where... It's not good. Like, <laughs> it's not good at all to where they shouldn't have done this. It's like, this will be probably better <laughs> as, a, as a TV show than a movie. Oh, okay. Uh, because the way that leads up to it, because think about that, like, you know, in, all, in any superhero movie, you have your origin story and, you know, their regular life, they get their superpowers, they're trying to learn it. Costume end. 90% of this movie is her learning to get to this point, and then you have a short ending of her finally realizing, oh, I can do this type of power stuff to where it ends. And it's like, and like I said, the girls, the three girls who she saves, never once do they don the costume. All that's the future, them, the, the villain part visualizing this in the future of them wearing the Spider Woman costumes. It's him visualizing that. Never once do they wear this in the movie. No one have any powers in the movie. Like, the trailer mm. is so misleading of what this movie actually is. That's so very unfortunate. Yeah, so... That's what I'm saying. It's not good, but not as bad as people are making it out to be. Okay. So would I say see this? Of course not. Don't see this. <laughs> of course not. Uh, you don't need to see this. You Because it's really you get nothing out of this movie at all. Like if you've never heard of Madam Web, you really kind of still don't know what's going on with Madam Web. All that mm -hmm. you know is that she can see the future. It's not like you get this elaborate story of her or anything else like that. So there is no benefit. You don't know about these three girls like super or spider girl or whoever their names are going to be in the future you have no idea who these people are so it is a waste of mm, i don't want to say a waste of time but i did not find this 
any beneficial at all. If I was going to rate this, I would rate this a one, <laughs> one and a half, one and a half stars. Fair enough. Out of five. Yes. Okay. What's what would be like the worst you can think of movie? Worst movie. Wow. I know it. It's hard to pick. It's not hard. We'd have to log into our, our our accounts. Oh, I'm sorry. Well, you don't have to do that for me. But he said it wasn't the worst thing he's ever seen. So I'm I'm curious. What is the worst thing? Let's see. I'm gonna go with um, either the Brady Bunch movie. That that's on. I hate that movie. Whoa! The first Le- Brady Bunch movie was fun. I saw it like within the last ten years. On purpose. Or maybe the Flintstones movie that came out when I was in high school. That was pretty bad. I'm trying, I'm trying to defend these movies, I'm and sorry. I'm leaning over. I, I loved it as a kid. I haven't seen it as an adult. So it, I may not like it. Sure. We'll, 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 we need to put that on the list to, to revisit, Matt. Okay. I'm reading my reviews. Nefarious has one star. Um, I'll have a lot of one and a half. What is that? Um, what was this about? Nefarious. I don't think I know that movie. Oh, that's the movie we watched where it turned, it was, um, we, we got recommended to watch it and it turned out it was like a Christian movie. (gasps) Oh yeah. You remember talking about the prison? I gave it, I gave it one star also. (laughs) Yeah. Yeah. (laughs) Okay. So I have a movie. So false pretenses lured you into this movie? You're saying um, no. The, the trailer did too, because like as you oh. watch the trailer, you're like, "Oh, this is a good thriller or whatever." And then once you start watching it, and they start, it, it it goes left. It could have been good. Yeah. It could have been. It had a decent premise, but okay. Excuse me. On my letterbox, I have a movie with half a star. Mm. Mm. Spencer, this is the one where um, what's this girl? What's Twilight Girl's name? Diana, Kristen Stewart. Uh, where Kristen Stewart played um, Princess, damn it, Princess Diana. Yeah, damn, sure. I, I got the burps. I found the movie offensive. Really? And that um, they had her being kind of whiny, and it's like the so Princess Diana is like one of the most beloved people from our lifetime. True. And I'm not saying maybe she was like this. Maybe she wasn't. I don't know. But, like, they had stuff where it's like, hey, man, so we need you. This is, this is your outfit for this for the this weekend. Wear this. And she's like, no, nah, I'm not wearing this. I'm going to do my own thing. And, like, okay, okay. So we just fired your wardrobe person because you wouldn't fucking wear the clothes. Because, like, what do we need? What does that person need a job for if you're not going to fucking do what you're supposed to fucking do? And I'm like, you're making me hate one of the most beloved humans in our lifetime. Yeah. Okay. Mm-hmm. Even if she was like this, I don't want to see that. Yeah. And then this is to supposed know. to be a biopic, but then it had ghosts and shit. Oh, <laughs> I didn't know that. Yeah. Yeah. She was like seeing specters and shit. And I'm like, what are we doing here, guys? Oh. The fucker. Like, that is genuinely a movie where I'm like, we could do a commentary on it, like just shitting on it while we're watching it. That's what that turned into for me. Yes, but how did Kristen Stewart do at playing Lady Diana Spencer? I mean, I guess she did well since I hated her character. Didn't she get nominated for like... She probably did, but they nominate shit they don't. Why is uh, Maestro nominated? Oh, we already discussed. I haven't seen it still yet. But I, we've I'm not watching it. that shit. Wait, we discussed it? We discussed that you're not going to watch it because you feel like it's overdone and... Yeah, it's, it's Oscar kinda, bait. Yeah, it is. Yeah. But I'm probably gonna watch it because I love Leonard Bernstein and so does my mom. So they don't even go they don't even get into it. Like he was like bisexual and they barely touched that. Yeah. I wanna see him sucking some dick. Really? Bradley Cooper, be brave. Mm-hmm. He can't do way. it. He, he had a prosthetic nose. Okay. How's he gonna <laughs> suck a dick? Well, no, the problem is the family's involved. That's the and same I, thing with that Bob Marley movie. I heard that that's not that good because really? they can't really go deep into it because the family's involved and they don't want to talk about the affairs and stuff. Mm. So, yeah. Yeah, the Bernstein thing I I heard about that, that basically ignores his half of his entire life and yeah. 
he uh, apparently put his wife through it. Yep. Which I did not know. Huh, yay. So maybe I won't like him as much if I watch <laughs> this movie and I'll see and I'll be like, oh, maybe he's not such a... But he did a lot for classical music. I'm not saying that he's not a quote-unquote great man. Mm, I Bradley Cooper's too handsome to play him. That's why he got the prosthetic nose. And he's too tall. I, I can't Bernstein speak on that. Bernstein was short. Okay. Bradley Cooper is tall. Okay. But he did... A star is born. They're going to let him do whatever he wants. He prints money, basically, at this point. You're not printing shit going straight to Netflix. Well, that's, you don't think Netflix is paying them a lot of money? But what are they getting? That's what I I'm saying. Don't, I don't know. Bradley no. Cooper, what does he need? No, no, I'm saying Netflix. What is Netflix getting? Netflix isn't... You, yeah. you're, you're getting subscription money no matter what you do, whether you pay Bradley Cooper $200 million to make a movie or not. True. That's a, that's a loss. This is why Netflix keeps raising my price? Yes. Every single month, they're like, it's going to go up by another dollar. They need to let shit go to the movie theater. They do. They really. Netflix shot themselves in the foot. The whole drop, the whole season at one time. Matt and I have had that conversation many a time. Yes. While I am of two minds, I hate waiting weekly for episodes to come out. But if you can watch it all at once, you're gonna. And then Netflix is. And then there's no reason to go back. Never talk about it. But yeah. Mm-hmm. Right, but yeah, we 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 gonna talk about that on my section. But Matt, you got you watch one more thing. You watched an Anton Fuqua film. Mm. I don't know who that is, but I watched The Beekeeper. <laughs> oh, you watched it? Equalizer, Matt. Oh, oh, uh, okay. The Beekeeper well, is what Jason Statham. Yeah, fights people now, with bees. This Anton is a... Fuqua has directed a lot of good action movies. He's a black guy. Um, okay, Matt, uh, uh, Joy, Joy, you got he me. He works with. Denzel, Denzel a lot. Denzel a lot, yeah. A lot. This was a good movie, actually. Like, a yeah, good, like that. you said, a good action movie. Um, mm. it's oh, wait, basic- no, 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 wait. Okay, I just, I just fucking lied. <gasps> I thought, I thought Antoine Fuqua directed this. David Ayer directed it. My bad. Suicide Squad, the first one. Oh, okay. Damn, I, I've been, I've been going out here in the community just lying. God damn. Telling stories, man. <laughs> I apologize, Matt. Please continue. Uh, no, it's um, basically um, and a lady, um, Felicia Rashad. She play, She's a older woman who basically, you know, those scammers where they, um, you know, put a bug on your computer. And if you click this link and things and be like, oh, and they take your money type of stuff from older people. And basically, that's what happens to where they took all of her money. They took money out of the charity that she was running and stuff mm-hmm. like that. And millions, millions of dollars. And uh, she ended up... I just saw this called... Uh, what do they call it? Now, she... Unalived herself? There we go. Yes, she unalived herself. We're a PC uh, culture on this podcast. Okay. Yes. She unalived herself, but um, apparently um, Jason Statham character, like uh, she's been letting them live on her her land or whatever, and he helped, and he's a beekeeper and stuff. But it turns out be- he is a beekeeper, but also beekeeper stands for one of those secret organizations where you know if the Marines and the Navy SEALs can't do it, <laughs> then we send this other organization in that's that's under the radar type of thing. The bees. And- Yes, and they call the because the bees protect the hive, and the hive is the United uh, States, I guess. The country, yeah. Of right. It so, is. and he's been retired, so then now he's upset at that. So he goes after these people, and it, it kind of gets crazy towards the end. I don't want to spoil it because it is a good movie, but if you want some good old fashioned action, John Wick type of Jason mm-hmm. Bourne action thriller stuff, please check it out. It's a good movie. Yeah, um, and I've heard nothing but good things about it, so I, I'm i not saying I'm going to check it out, but I might not check you it out. You totally made fun of that movie. Though. Oh, yeah, yeah, like on The <laughs> Simpsons, when Homer was like, uh, what are you going to do, Mr. Burns, send the dogs on, at me, or the bees, or the dogs with bees in their mouth, and every time they bark. I think that's actually what you said. No, I'm saying, well, I'm trying to think. When you said that, I was like, wait, does he kill anybody with bees? But no, he doesn't kill anybody with bees. Oh, that's that's a letdown. We gotta wait for the beekeeper part too. <laughs> the bees are back. Uh, uh, are there bees featured in the film? 
Oh um, yeah, it, and they're, then they're the, just the, at the, the beginning the, of the movie. <laughs> There's like one beat. They couldn't. Yes. They couldn't afford a high. <laughs> They just they just uh, CGI'd one and they just kept going over yeah. and over again. Oh. Yes. To make millions. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Um, Much easier and safer. Mm. <laughs> mm-hmm. So I wanna I wanna just bring everybody down for a second. Um, cool. So I was in a car accident the other day. Um, this is the first car accident I've been in as an adult. Really? Uh, I was I, I I remember vividly I was in one like when I was a kid with my mom. Uh I was like we we got rear ended or something like that. And I remember it was like a whole ordeal. Cuz you know, you, you my mom's been on the show. She's she's a lot as a human. Well, we're we're going to say that. And while my mom's a lotness now in her older age can come off comical. When she was younger, her lotness was um, very sharp, if you get mm-hmm. what I'm saying. Mm-hmm. mm-hmm. Yeah. So it was, a, it was an experience when I was a young man. But so let me just, just the um, abridged version. I was at the car wash um, trying to get um, my vacuum my car because I'd already gotten it washed. There was a minivan in front of me. They pulled into the spot one spot and so i was gonna back into the spot next to them because i just needed to vacuum my driver's side and as i'm backing up they decide that they're not in their spot good enough and they start backing up and i'm honking like hey hey honk just i'm I'm holding it down and they keep going and they hit me and you know there's an older guy he gets out and he's apologizing profusely and basically he wears a hearing aid and he couldn't hear me and this is a minivan with a camera and he wasn't looking at the camera because, you know, he don't trust the cameras. He, he trusts his eyes. The technology. Mm. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Great. That's working out well. Yeah. So, yeah. So it's, it's, it's been an interesting time going through insurance and all that stuff. And it's still ongoing. Uh, I talked to my agent yesterday, time of recording. And uh, she says she's going to reach out to that guy's insurance because I'm like, I feel like I shouldn't have to pay the deductible since this was not my fault. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So she's looking sense. into it and I'm supposed to drop my car off in a, in a week. Well, let me see when this episode comes out. When this episode comes out, I drop I drop I drop my car off the day before the next episode drops. Was so, it a lot of damage or small damage? Oh, sorry. Uh, if you're watching on YouTube, there's a picture up right now. Uh, I'll send it to you. Okay. Um, so it's my the damage is at my is on my rear rear driver's um, panel door. door. Yes. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you, Joy. Thank I can you. picture it in my. I've seen the picture. Yeah. I just. So, it's interesting to me that you say you've never been in a, a car accident as an adult, like. I wouldn't say I've been in a ton, but I've been definitely been rear-ended as an adult or backed into like that. I don't I don't know that I would even consider that like a car accident. Well, it's a, I mean, it's a fender bender, but yeah. it's, it's still an accident. No, and it is. And it, it, it is stressful and sends you into a state of, you know, fight or flight and just messes with your head. And Yes. All right. There you go, Matt. You sent the picture yeah. so you can see the damage on your car. Yeah, so I don't know. It's I don't know. Thankfully, Emma wasn't in the car. Yeah. Um, I mean, it wasn't on her side, but you know, I don't. You no. Know, yeah, you don't want your kid in the car and, and all that. Food. Oh damn. Yeah. So how fast was he going? How fast was he backing right? up? Like he was just backing up. He right. Must have just like. I mean, I, 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 it was a it was a minivan, man. Yeah. Damn. It is big. It had some weight. Well, as you're telling the story, he's like, he's backing up. In my mind, you visualize somebody backing up. They back up slowly. But, like, this is a big-ass dent yeah. in the side of your car. So he yeah. had to be going fast. I mean, well, it didn't seem fast. I don't know. Maybe it's like one of those adrenaline situations where everything slowed down around me. Maybe. Did you tell him to yeah. check the camera next time? <laughs> I honestly, if we can just be candid. Or charge up the hearing aids? I, <laughs> he keeps his batteries in his wallet. And I was like, you don't feel that when you sit, sir? <laughs> I was filled with so much rage. And this was an older white guy. 
and it took everything in me not to display how angry I was. Okay. If we could just, you know, if we could just lay it all on the table. I was, I was not happy. No. I I'm still it. not happy about this whole ordeal <laughs> and all this stuff, but <sighs> we'll get it sorted. Um, so yeah, that's, um, that's kind of what I've been sorting through, um, (laughs) this week, time of recording. (laughs) Um, but I did get a chance to watch something. Um, I'm not going to go spoilery or anything like that. Um, but I watched the live action adaptation of Avatar The Last Airbender on Netflix. And I'm a big fan of the of the series. Like, um, I own this series and the sequel series on Blu-ray. I've I watched it when it all aired on television. I'm a big fan. Great storytelling. This show is okay, in my opinion. Uh, I'm not saying it's bad. I'm not saying don't watch it. But I mean, one is live action, and so it's like, and it's a TV show. So that budget's only can can do so much effects wise. Um, so like, I'm not knocking them at all. Like they did overall, it was pretty good with the effects. Like there's like some animal creatures that are regulars on the show that you don't see a lot cause you know, that, that costs money, (laughs) you know, the CGI. Um, also, you know, the first season of the anime of the live action show was eight episodes. And I want to say the animated show was like 20 something episodes. Mm-hmm. Um, so they, they did a decent job of like mixing storylines together to make a cohesive story. Um, so overall it was fine. Like, uh, I, I feel I would rate it like a three out of five. I guess not terrible. Like some of these other adaptations, um, if like for you, I know you never seen like all of the original show, Matt, I would say if you want an idea of, um, if you want an idea of like what the show's like, I would say watch it. But like the animated show's a lot better. Just and I was actually thinking about your analysis of One Piece, about how like they get into like the backstories and stuff, and it's like it's not that deep, but like it just the sh- the show gives certain storylines room to breathe, mm-hmm. where it felt like some things that were happening in this show. They were like, okay, here's like the beginning part of it, and we have to immediately get to the next one because we only have eight episodes. And that's what I was thinking about the One Piece as you was explaining this to where it's like somebody like me who hasn't watched it. So if I watch this, I'm like, oh, I really like Avatar. Then I can go watch the anime and get a further, deeper storyline about what's going on. So try to bring in new watchers and stuff like that. But mm-hmm. like people who watch the the full thing, you're like, okay, you're you're checking for the aesthetics, the characters, making sure they do this and, you know, it's the same thing like that. Um uh, and you get it. Okay, they got to cut some stuff from, you know, you would you say 20 plus episodes down to 8, so of course yeah. things are going to get cut. Yeah, so it's not a bad adaptation, but like and I, I'm doing my best to be like, well, the show was better. It was. But, like, with the um, limitations that they had with, like, bringing it from animation to live action with, like, the money and effects and the constraints of, like, we're doing this in eight hours instead of, you know, 20s, you know, 12-ish hours or whatever that, that comes out to be. Mm-hmm. Um, they did. They did. It, they did well. That's all you can really ask for. I mean, everything's not going to be perfect and it's not going to be your favorite i mean did you think you would like this more no you didn't no but i i was i I was just going in hoping it wasn't going to be trash and also with this and i haven't seen anybody talk about it lately or recently i mean i know it just came out a couple days ago but with the success of one piece and hopefully the success of avatar last airbender um do you see the move to do this more often and the first name that comes up to mind is naruto where i know that has a big anime following do you think that would be or one of the next 
live thought, action ones that I, they try to do. I thought I saw something saying that they were going to try and do that. Oh, maybe. Because I know they did, you know, they did, uh, what was that? Oh, Cowboy Bebop. Yeah, Cowboy Bebop, uh, One Death Piece. Note. I mean, recently. Okay. Yeah, I'm talking about like in the last, like recently ones. Because I know they done Dragon Ball Z movie i know that was trash but i'm saying like well, well last, i said like, one four or five I years said, i said one note because like netflix did that too yeah so i'm like maybe with this new era coming where they they are better at this stuff to where you will start getting more of these live adaption of these animes yeah maybe but yeah, um, before we get to the main event tonight, uh, I'm not sure if Matt, you've been watching it, but Joy and I have been watching uh, True Detective Night Country. Uh, Matt, have you been watching any of it? No, everybody keeps telling me that I need to be watching True Detective and I've heard all about it and it's just, it became like, I didn't know about it at first. That's why I haven't watched it. And mm -hmm. now the more people tell me to watch it, it's kind of like, my thing with Game of Thrones to where everybody was talking about Game of Thrones and how I need to watch Game of Thrones and it's like me bucking the system. Now since everybody keeps telling me to watch it, Band now I him. don't want to watch it. Yeah. Yeah. You can't make me. No, I get that. I get that. I mean the the helpful thing with True Detective is each season is different. So mm -hmm. it's not like you're like, oh man, I gotta watch three seasons of whatever so I understand you what's happening try. in this season. So you can like, you know, slide in and out as you will. Mm-hmm. But no, um, also, uh, it got picked up for a fifth season yeah, with the same that. showrunner. Uh, I guess uh, uh, background stuff. Um, this season's been getting a lot of hate. Um, got a female showrunner, and the leads are women, and they're, uh, the, the creator of the show has been online dunking on this season. Really? Yes. Why? Because they're saying like the writing isn't good and you know S A W politics and bullshit like that. S A. Would you say S J W? Social justice warrior. Oh, okay. Yeah. Really? Do Do you feel like like um since you you since you've seen this, you think this is this season is a fall off from the other ones? Um, I will say that I personally. Well, I guess that's spoilers. We'll, we'll get there in a second. This was a good season, but I have issues with this season. Is this the worst season of True Detective? No, absolutely not. This is not the best season either, but this is not the worst season, in my opinion. Mm -hmm. So it's kind of like the Madam Web of stuff. I wouldn't <laughs> compare it to that, because like, <laughs> this this is pretty good. It's yeah. just... Okay, so let's, let's kind of... Overall, the the case of this season is Jodie Foster is the sheriff in a. Small oh, they got Jodie Foster in this. Yeah, yeah. Th that's that's the that's the thing about True Detective. They're gonna bring a list Top. a list ish actors to be in the show. Yeah. So we season always have. So season one was Matthew McConaughey and um was all right all right Woody Harrelson. Matthew McConaughey is all right all right all yeah, right. Yeah, yeah. Woody Harrelson is his brother. <laughs> yeah sure and then season... and who was the showrunner that you is it the so uh cory uh um uh fukunawa yeah it's not cory but uh carrie carrie fukunawa okay uh excellent director mm -hmm. and like that that's genuinely the best season honestly mm -hmm. i was a little disappointed with the finale but everything else was just great Season two, you had Colin Farrell and Rachel McAdams and um, what's that big headed motherfucker? Fred Claus. Vince Vaughn? Yeah. They were season two. I've never noticed Vince Vaughn's head. <laughs> now I want to go look it up. And then big headed motherfucker. Yeah. I've never thought of it. And then season three had Mahershala Ali and um, mm. the bad guy from Blade One. Mm. Yeah, that, that dude. Yeah. I thought it was great. Jodie Foster is fantastic, but the other female lead, the lead. Yeah, she used to be a uh, MMA fighter. She was, yeah, phenomenal. So like riveting. Like you couldn't look away when she was on screen. So basically, Jodie Foster is a uh, the sheriff in a small town in Alaska, 
and and uh, the night has just started oh right? yeah and so like the polar uh, night thing. yeah 40 days of night just started and so like some scientists from a research facility they just mysteriously disappear and eventually they find them like almost all of them like frozen solid in the in the in the tundra naked and they're like mm-hmm. what the hell happened here with like weird injuries like self-inflicted bites and scratchings and yeah. things like that and it's like but they're all together naked right frozen like, like they're like a big ice block mm-hmm. and so it's like what's happening here and how did it get to be like yeah so like a big thing with seasons one and four of true detective is that it plays with is what's happening supernatural and what i will say is that uh spoilers is not like this is Mm -hmm. very much in our world and so what i didn't care for in this season was that it leaned so heavily on is this magic that when they were like it's not and they explain what actually happened i'm like at no point did you prepare us for that outcome. And I feel like that's that's not good writing of mysteries because mm-hmm. it leans so heavily on like the weird part of the mystery. Yeah. And it there was not a lot of investigation. Cause like every time like something needed to be investigated, her her boy he just handed her a photo. It's like, okay, well, I'll look this up and here you go. Found this research and yeah. this is what happened to this person. And yeah. So she... Jodie Foster didn't do a lot of true detectiving, if we can be fair. Is that what this, this the show is known for? Them actually detectiving doing stuff it, like that? It's called true detective, man. Detect some shit. Uh, okay. So maybe that's why the uh, creator well, was like, this ain't. But the first season is very much the same way with the supernatural element. and I don't remember how much detectiving it was, but what was I saw, I feel like this is like a condition of like the first and third season versus the second and fourth, where they're telling a story straight up Mm -hmm. versus the first and third season. They're telling you get half the story now and half the story in flashbacks and it's going back and forth. Mm -hmm. And so like, you're tr- slow you yourself as an audience member are trying to fill in the gaps so of like how are you like this now when you were not like this as a person back then mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. and like the so it's like a lot of things happening at once but seasons two and three they were just we we're just gonna tell this story straight up and it's like it's not as interesting no it's not so you're kind of being, it's like that, it's like, you know, a magician's trick. You're getting razzle dazzled by like the flashing back and forth as opposed to just like just telling the story because it's not super strong. Like mm. the resolution is interesting. I just wish that it built up to it instead of spending so much time on, oh, spirits. There are spirits out here, y'all. Mm-hmm. Okay. So that's kind of how I feel about that. But Joy, what were your thoughts on the season? I thought it was great. I loved it. But I watched like one episode and then I forgot about it. So then I <laughs> caught up with a whole bunch. So yeah, when you binge it in one day, yeah, you really do dig it. Um, but I agree with the, because I like the supernatural element. But yes, when they did do the explanation of it, it was like, oh, okay, really? that's, that's cool. That's what happened? Cool, bro. Cool. Mm, not yeah, so I saw something online that was talking about how it probably would have been better if True Detective Night Country would have been dumped at once and Mr. and Mrs. Smith would have been week to week because, like, the way in which they gave you information on True Detective was, like, you know, you the, the second episode... Like, the first episode ends on a big cliffhanger of, like, they find the ice block of men... And you're like, what the hell is happening here? And then the second episode, they meander on some other stuff until the end where they're like, here's another cliffhanger. And they just keep like, like teasing mm-hmm. the carrot. Mm. I can yeah. see that. So, yeah, I don't know. That feels very streaming method of like getting you to watch the next episode next mm-hmm. as opposed to like, me genuinely being riveted by this to where I can I'm not saying that it felt like a chore to come back to the show but it's just like Joy says she forgot about it 
for <laughs> weeks. <laughs> I had stuff going on, okay? So it's like it's, Mr. and Mrs. Smith. I'll come back to it. Like with Mr. and Mrs. Smith, I would have came back week to week for that because I'm like, what adventure are these guys getting into this week? Yeah. Mm-hmm. Like this is mm-hmm. just like but I will I will watch season five. I'm interested to see who they who they get for that. Yeah. And they are bringing the showrunner back. So obviously yeah. they were happy with so, I mean, this the the finale it got the highest ratings the show ever got really? out of all four seasons. Well, what is this on? HBO. HBO. Okay. I'm sorry, Max. Well, no, it's because it's on TV. So it's on the television network, HBO. Oh, yeah. We're just watching it on Max, the place to watch HBO. <laughs> <laughs> so weird. But all right. Um, all that to say... Um, this week we discuss Eve's Bayou. The summer I killed my father, I was 10 years old. I saw Daddy. What? Daddy and Mrs. Moreau. That's a lie. She thinks I'm driving you away. She's a child, bro. How do you kill someone with Rudy? What did little Eve see and how will it haunt her? Husband, father, and womanizer Louis Baptiste is the head of an affluent family. But it's the women who rule this gothic world of secrets, lies, and mystic forces. Joy, what did you think of Eve's Bayou? I thought it was amazing. I, I, wait, have you? Oh, it's, let's, I had not seen it before. No, okay. I've read about it and like knew that it existed. <laughs> I didn't think it was a chick flick. I thought it it had a lot of intrigue. I thought it had good buildup. Um, the three kids were amazing. I'll watch Journey Small do anything. <laughs> like from, as a ten year old, as an adult, I loved her in um, Lovecraft Country. Mm, that mm. was who didn't love Lovecraft <laughs> Country. I mean, we don't have to talk about that other stuff, but you know, it had it had There's Megan more. Good. I was not expecting to see Megan, a Tiny young Megan baby. Good. Yes. I was not expecting to see her in this movie because yeah. I, I saw I saw her in the, on that first scene at the party. I was like, I know that's not Megan Good, and I was like, oh, okay. I didn't know she was acting that young. I didn't either. I knew that Journey Smollett did. Yeah. Because she's, she's been on in a the, bunch she's of on stuff. That, she's, on a, she's on TV as a kid. Uh, uh, Full House. Thank you. Thank you. She was, she was oh. Michelle's friend. <gasps> That's right. Yeah. And then apparently the child that played the little brother in this movie is her actual. But not that brother. Not that brother. Right. That's, let's let's make it very clear. <laughs> not that brother. <laughs> So you told me to tell you, I I don't like Samuel L. Jackson. Okay, go deeper into that. I just, like, I love him in, like, action-type roles or things like that. But, like, a serious part like this, well, you weren't supposed to like his character anyway. No. So, I mean, it was okay. But I just, I don't think he's very attractive. And, like, in the case of this, I don't know. I don't know how I feel. He just, he didn't do it for me. Okay. Overall, what you think of the movie? Um, I think uh, there was a lot going on <laughs> in the movie. I loved the sister. Which? Moselle. Oh, okay. His okay. sister, the dad's sister. Um, in her relationship with, because you get the feeling like, the poor child is kind of the middle child and nobody cares about her. Really they they kind of don't. I mean, dad cares about the older daughter and mom cares about the son. And yeah. she's just like stuck in. The, yeah. yeah. I mean, that's why. And so the aunt kind of like takes her under yeah. her wing, but then the aunt goes through a whole bunch of tragedy too. Yeah. And her story was riveting when she talked about like with her ex-husbands and stuff. And then that lady said she was cursed, but she kind of is though. And then dude showed up with the long hair. What? I hated that hair. <laughs> I did too. I, I did too. He took the hat off and I was like, oh, why would you it's give like him Shamar that hair? Shamar Moore with the dreads. I thought that he, I thought that eventually they was going to like give him a haircut and he was going to glow up. But at the end when he's at the funeral, I'm like, sir. Yeah. Sir, why do you still look like you've been living in the woods? <laughs> it that hair was a lot. It was. And that actor does not have normally long no. hair. No, that was a terrible wig. Yeah, it was awful. <laughs> and he just randomly shows up on her doorstep and, like, paints her. 
Yeah. And then they fall in love. That's the move right there. I mean. That is the move right there. Well, he's looking for his wife. Look, women like it when you're honest with them. You can you can get so far when you're honest. <laughs> I'm just I'm just gonna really? put really I'm just gonna put that on the table and walk away. Okay. Honesty gets you very far. Mm-hmm. Yeah. That's why they say it's the best policy. That is true. That is true. But That's I don't know. True. It's just people are afraid of what will happen if you if you share your truth. Because, like, mm-hmm. I have an end goal here, and I may not get to that end goal if I tell you my truth. True. But if you tell that truth to the right person, you'll get even more than you bargained for. Sometimes. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Well, and the movie had a lot of, like, like family secrets. Mm-hmm. and Did this person see this thing happen? And did this person know that this happened? And um, I personally liked Grandma, who was just like, these children don't know how to act in this house. In my was- day. You would have got the you shit beat out of you. She basically said that yeah. a couple times in the movie, which I was like, Facts. sounds like something my grandma would say too. Facts. So, mm-hmm. yes. I get it. Matt, have you seen this movie before? If you would have asked me before this, have you seen Eat by Yo? But yeah, I've seen that before. <laughs> Turns out, no, I have not seen it before. You have not. Right. <laughs> this is all new to you. Right. Um,. I watched this movie and it gave me, what's the word I want to say? I just got to be honest. If you want to edit this out or I need to change words, I got to speak for you. Gave me a lot of pedophile stuff in this as I'm watching this. Yeah, vibes. Yeah. Yeah. I'm not yeah, editing that yeah. out because it's facts. Uh, okay. So as I'm watching this, like even at the, the very beginning when. He's dancing uh, with making good. No, before that, when the dude comes up and Megan Good is selling chocolate or giving away chocolate and this he journey. kisses her. Oh yeah, yeah, and that's yeah, her. And that's her he, aunt's husband, right? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, and he's like kissing her, and I was like, yeah. But I always it, think back and think this was the '60s. Yeah, that was. That's not something that you would see today. But in the '60s, yeah, they would have a house party and your kids would stay up late and kiss their uncle. Well, I mean, and then that was just the tip of the iceberg. Right. And then like it was. This movie was was okay. I, I, I thought journey was phenomenal in this movie. Her acting and everything like this. Um, She carried this whole movie. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Um, and like you said, uh, Samuel's sister, I put her at number two. Um, it like felt, to, her... to me, it felt like the wife was sleepwalking through this role. Right. It, it, she was yeah, there to be pretty. Yeah. She was a pretty and face. And like you said, like, have we ever known, well, I'm, I'm in today's eyes, have we ever known Sam Jackson to be the ladies' man and stuff like that? Absolutely like said, no. Absolutely. Right. Not. What I'm saying. But also, like, you know, if I he's a doctor going from okay, let me the thing that made me mad during this time is if you are cheating in a small town, <laughs> why are you doing this publicly? Like it's one thing we drunk at a party. It's another thing I'm about to go to the neighborhood bar and be all up on this girl. That you know has a husband. It's just like, what are we doing here? So like, when he shot him, shoot him. You have no. Di- he said, basically, keep my wife's name out your mouth. And then at the end, he's talking about he buy her, not kill him. It's just like he antagonized this man all the way up. Yeah. Yeah. And it was just, I just keep thinking, why are you doing this stuff in public like this? Because, like that, that made me mad. Um, the wife made me mad when she was like, uh, we gonna keep him in the house this whole time. I was, right. I was just like all this stuff afterwards when I was doing, when I looked up, right. Cause I'm like, this is an okay movie. And then the first thing that popped up was like, this movie got voted into the national archives of whatever, whatever movie thing. Right. Mm-hmm. And I was like. It can't be the movie I just watched. <laughs> I don't 
I don't think it's that good. I don't. It's not a bad movie. Far from being a bad movie, it's just an okay movie. It, but for it to be like saved and for archives, mm -hmm. what movie? What part of this movie am I missing that is that good? I don't. I hate to say this on the air, Matt, but it's because it's a black movie partially. You can't. Or you can't agree with that, Joy. Okay, fine. I won't agree with it, but <laughs> fine. Um, I think I think that's part of the reason, though. Okay, I, think it's, I, I mean, it's a, we'll, we'll, it's we'll a rep for the home piece. team, but still. It, but like, okay, think about this. Like, it's a black movie, not about black suffering, right? Like, this movie works even if all the people were white. Mm -hmm. So it's like, how many movies can you say that about with a black cast? I didn't see a single white person in this movie. How many movies can you say that about a black a black movie? There is not any black suffering. That's true. They especially nowadays they go way too far with that stuff. Right. So I get it, like from like a technical level, why it would get you know put into something like that. Because mm -hmm. mm -hmm. it's it's so rare that you just get a a, a film that's not about like that. It does not make you think about how these people are black. Mm -hmm. I appreciate that's that true. about this movie, right? Because it's more. It wasn't about being black. It was more about being from the south. Yeah, it's just life. Just yeah. life. Right. Like, like I right. said, it, you could all the you could swap everybody in this movie for white people, and nothing. I mean, maybe a little bit of the voodoo stuff, but like nothing really. You know, it yeah. still makes sense. Right. Right. Yeah. And um, go to man good. It was like yeah. I know she was in Friday as a kid, but like having her see her acting acting as a kid was kind of weird to see too. So funny enough, she was supposed to be uh, Eve, but it took so long for them to get funding for the movie that she got too, she old. too old. Yeah. Uh, okay. I don't know that she could do the job that Journey Smollett did. I mean, probably not. That that kid can act man i mean yeah. she takes you from cry like you firmly believe like yeah. everything that happens in that movie and he's right she carried that whole movie no she yeah she did um so i liked this movie i it what i like about certain movies is like when uh, to me a movie feels like a book like this was based off of a book apparently it's not like it's loosely based off the director's life and i mean loosely hmm. but like i i like that vibe of it because like for me if something feels like a book i'm able to forgive certain things in the storytelling because this really mm -hmm. wasn't like a cohesive story this was just like slices of life yeah. like mm -hmm. little episodes in their life that summer or whatever right mm -hmm. and so like if i'm like oh yeah this like chapters in a book it's not but um so i, I appreciate that where it's just like a chill movie right where we're just we're just meandering kind of and like you don't really get a lot of movies like that these days uh, where we're just kind of meandering to the end you know there's not like a big I mean there's like yes there's like a big well there's a couple gunshots in the movie now that I'm thinking about it oh yeah yeah um though the um the aunt, I mean I did find the aunt interesting with her like side job and then also like <laughs> the circumstances in which her husband's died like what what are we doing here what kind of foul shit is like you barge into this man's house and says i'm taking your wife and he pulls a gun out sir i thought, a, I, I thought out that of pocket was, no i thought she was out of pocket for that too i was like you you carrying on with this man and then now the man shows up is like i want to be with you and then you didn't really love that husband like that until, until he calmly stood up to your new man and now you want to be with him i was like they both out of pocket for that yeah yeah this man this man is literally sitting down reading his paper and some some guy just barges in talking about i'm taking your wife um no the fuck you're not <laughs> right. what are you do <laughs> what is <laughs> what are we doing here <laughs> but i did not expect that part of the story yeah. either that was a little but no, um, I did like this movie. I I'm still debating on what I would rate it because it's like nothing really did happen in this shit. 
<laughs> until like the end. Mm. <laughs> but I mean, yeah, it was it was well acted. The um the you know the the cinematography was great like the locations were great the costumes were great like i said i really appreciate how i didn't really yes i didn't see a single white person in this movie and i didn't really think about like this is just some it's some black people on the screen i was just like this is a movie like yeah. it for me i was just able to just look at the story and not think about like this is the 60s and these people are black and like why that's not a great thing it was just mm-hmm. I just watched it. Mm-hmm. And I, I cannot say that for many period pieces. So one thing I really I, appreciated I, that. Or no, one thing I noticed was about the month the money exchange about she was paying a dollar for each stuff or whatever. And then she was like, You got twenty dollars? Oh, definitely bet. <laughs> so like, where you, where you get twenty dollars from, young lady? That's a twenty dollar yeah. bill. And it was an right, old twenty too. It wasn't yeah, the yeah. new one with the big picture on it. It was the old two. But what one. I thought was funny was when the aunt was like, "I got uh, Monopoly," and I was looking at that uh, the Monopoly like the the box. I was like, Mm-mm. I looked up what the Monopoly box looks like in nineteen sixty two, and it did. No, that's that nineteen nineties box you had there, ma'am. <laughs> what you guys think about the accents? I could have. Or, or not I really could've... say accents. I meant like, well, accents or whatever. Because I know um, Sam Jackson like Samuel, was trying. He, right, he was, he was trying. trying. Like you, you hear it or certain words or whatever, but it'll fade away to just be Sam Jackson again. <laughs> yeah. I was like, don't let's just let's just not do it, okay? If you can't do it. Just let's just not do it. Leave it alone. Just put it aside and act the rest of the yeah. part with that. Yeah, there was yeah. certain words would stick out and I'd be like, oh, he said that again. Ooh. Like, <laughs> with his weird kind of Bayou accent. Yeah, not kind really... of. Pseudo. Yeah. Yeah. I, I will say this. I don't advocate for like hitting children, but like the way Megan Good was acting, I was like, I don't remember the wife's name. If you don't hit this little girl, Roz. like when she... Ross, like when she was like talking back, like at the dinner table, when she's like, I don't want y'all going out. And then she was acting extra fucking out of pocket and stuff. Um, Even Journey. Yeah. yeah. When she put the snake on her brother's pillow, she came down there and she was talking about when I was like, they both was getting, mm-hmm. yeah, they should have, mm-hmm. uh, they both should have got a whoop it. This is yeah. 1960s, like we, right, and, and this movie was made in the 90s. We yeah. can show kids getting hit, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I was raised in the 80s, my mom would have beat the sleeves <laughs> off me if I had yeah. put a snake in my brother's bed, and they were all older than me, so you right. know, but but it's like you talk, but like the way that they talking back, and it's like and making good when um, uh, uh, Sam Jackson wasn't home, and she's like, it's your she, fault that he not home, and all this this stuff i'm like this is when you get hit you can't yeah, talk right. like this right. you can't talk like this and then she waited to the very part where she comes back from getting her hair done and everything that's what she oh, was I for- yeah i forgot about yeah. that part i forgot about that part like little girl what are you doing all right my the- question is at the end what story is is the is it the true story the true mm. oh who that's a good one. I do like how like this movie played with like your perception of reality, mm-hmm. like where mm-hmm. we saw like uh, Journey watch Sam Jackson and that lady in the garage, and then Megan Good was like, "No, this is what happened." Yes. I right. so I like like the yeah. So ooh, ugh. I was very grossed out when um, we heard Megan's version of the story because I you know I don't I don't I don't like that shit. I, I didn't. I didn't like the whole kiss, like, cause you can, you know, she's a kid, and Sam Jackson's probably in his thirties or whatever at the time, and it was just like, for I get this is story, they're acting, but like him kissing a young kid, I was just like, I don't like this at all. Right. I know. I know it's acting, but I'm like, I still don't like this. Hundred percent. Yeah. Yeah. I. I don't know. Like. Ugh. I, what would have been the point of lying about that though? And that's where my thing is: is Sam. I'm trying to think. Sam is a liar. Yes. Or wait. What is did he lie, or did he not tell the truth? What do you what, mean? Or, With the letter? No, in general. 
because he was saying that he's doing his doctor stuff, which he was, but then he, when he does his doctor stuff, he has sex with his clients. Does he not tell the truth, or is he lying? Mm. Um. Well, it's hard to say because we only saw him with one patient, mm-hmm. like out. Oh well, no, two. That old lady. Mm. Um. Yeah. So it's hard to say. He could be saying he's seeing patients, but just going to women's houses and just having yeah. sex. That was the impression that I got. Yeah. That he right, because I was gonna say like, yeah. My thing was if he does if he if he's not a liar and just a hider or not telling the truth then i'm inclined to believe his letter but if he is a liar then why would i believe this letter right so i i I was i was left that megan good is telling the truth and i came away with the impression of it was more about the kids not knowing exactly what was happening or they had seen so maybe she was just confused about what happened she felt like he was a he was yeah advancing towards her in certain ways whereas he felt like no she was yeah. the opposite and maybe neither way is the right way that it happened and we'll just never know you know i yeah. mean did that well we happen? won't know <laughs> we won't Oh, that was heartbreak at the end too. And she even tried to like do the gift thing and figure out what happened. And doesn't matter because man shot dad yeah. at the bar. Oops. Yeah, and also it's like you, she, uh, Eve, like incited that whole thing. Like I mean, talking about giving the twenty dollars. Like, girl, why do you say that to that husband? Oh yeah, yeah. Why did I was she like, go you to being, the bar? You just, you just being messy. You just She's being trying messy. to save her dad. And ended up oh. getting him. All right. So the question I wanted to have is, I got confused. Once Megan Good told her what happened, so she was all wanted to kill him, and she went yeah. there, and she did everything. What changed once she to- um, the lady told her, oh, no, it's already in the fact. There is no voodoo doll. And then she wanted to save her father. What changed from her wanting to kill him to then? She wanted to be in control of it. Yeah. Oh, okay, okay. Well, and so I since she, you... so since she wasn't in control, that's what she wanted to stop it, right? And okay. everybody's had that moment with their parent where they're like, "Oh, I hate you," you know, "I wish mm-hmm. you were dead," and then an hour later, or eight hours later, or whatever, the next day, you don't feel that way anymore. So I think it was more of that. I absolutely loved though when she thought she was gonna get a voodoo doll and she was sticking the pins. In yeah, the she's monkey. practicing. Yeah, I was dying like because I was a monkey too. So yeah, and she was really hoping for that doll with the hair and stuff. And yeah. Nope. Wow, uh, this is full service voodoo. Okay, <laughs> it's already been taken care of. Right. So, what do y'all think the Rotten Tomatoes was on Eve's Bayou? Do you give a general? Yeah, just throw a number out there. What is Rotten Tomatoes? One hundred percent. Yep, like uh, like in school. I'm gonna say eighty five. Um, that's just totally random. I would say a seventy five, but after reading that it was in this archive thing, I'm gonna say it's something high. So ninety two. Eighty three percent. With an 89% audience score. Okay. All right. So, the director of Ease Bayou, Casey Lemons, also has an acting background. Of the following, which film did she act in instead of direct? A, Candyman. B, Harriet. Or C, Whitney Houston, I Want to Dance with Somebody. And once more, the question is, which one did she act in and not direct? Can I look up what she looks like? No. She's then I'm gonna go. Then I'm going to go with Candyman. Why are you saying that? Because as I thought about it, everybody was black in Candyman. <laughs> because I've never seen the Whitney Houston one. And what was the second one? Harriet. I didn't see that either. The Harriet Tubman biopic. Mm. Nah. So Which I feel like was a missed opportunity. I feel like that should have been called Tubman. Like it, I feel mm-hmm. like it rings. 
Right. Because when you first yeah. said Harriet, first they got thought of Harriet the Spy. Right. Yeah. <laughs> All right, Joy, which one? Okay, which Candyman are you talking about? I intentionally when... didn't say oh, that. Oh, I hate you. What were the other movies? Candyman. Harriet or the Whitney Houston biopic. I'm going to say that she did not direct the Whitney Houston movie, but she was in it. Okay. So Matt's correct. Um, I am referencing the original Candyman. Okay. So um, a white man actually directed the original Candyman. Okay. Um, she, but a black woman did direct the, the remake. Just okay. not, just not her. Okay. Um, so she was an actress <laughs> And she was also in Silence of the Lambs. Um, so she and um in Candyman, she was the white lady's best friend. And Silence of the Lambs, she was Clarice's black best friend. Okay. Yeah. And she directed Harriet and also the Whitney Houston biopic. So those were more. Oh, awesome. also the five heartbeats. I'm just looking her up now. She has Robert, something with the five heartbeats. She was in five heartbeats. Robert Townsend oh, okay. directed it. Okay. Our father. Yes. <laughs> okay. Uh, he played the dad and the bear. I just finished Yes, that. he did. I was disappointed that he didn't direct any of the episodes that season. That would have been nice for them. So maybe season three. Who knows? Yeah. Yes. Um, trivia dump. According to the... Uh, according to writer and director Casey Lemons, her cut differed greatly from the final cut released to theaters, which eliminated a major character from the movie. Uh, Deborah Cox's music video for Nobody's Supposed to Be Here was filmed on the uh, main property of the house. Hmm. Uh, in the film, Moselle Baptiste is about to marry her fourth husband. Debbie Morgan, the actress, has had four husbands in real life. And Journey Smollett and Megan Good would later star together in Roll Bounce. Never saw that one. Really? That's what Bow Wow, right? Probably. So I think so. I don't know. Is I, know. It a, I don't remember skating. I don't remember. Yeah, yeah. I don't remember Journey in that. She was the love interest. I'm, maybe I'm assuming. <laughs> maybe roller skating will make a big comeback because of Usher. Oh yeah, he has been doing that in Vegas a lot. I yeah, heard the, that, the, but the I did not movie. expect that. Uh, yeah, I didn't either. Him to roll out on some skates and. Oh, 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 oh. All right, so that's the show. Uh, I want to thank you for coming on to a regular episode joy watch it dude i'm doing a lot over here like honestly this is not my normal setup can i end the episode by just kicking this and it'll just go <laughs> and fall over i would like it if you didn't do that but i appreciate you know you thinking outside the matt box. gets it i'm here to break shit exactly all right also i need to know um tell me a fun fact about chad from his when you first worked together like Tell me something embar- Tell me an embarrassing story Ooh. about Chad. You really put Matt on the spot here. He may have to come up with it for next time. That's fine. Embarrassing. I like dirt. I like dirt. Embarrassing. Is there something like you'll never let him live it down? No. Um, the stuff I would never let him down, he's honest with it. He talks about the stuff that he's done, so... No, I mean, there's not no, so we don't have uh, a secret thing that he's done. He, he, one thing, he's very open about his um, adventures. My, yeah, my extracurricular activities. Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah. Nice. Not a lot of dirt from this. I know guy. you cried when you, was he? No, you didn't cry. I took that back. Somebody else cried. All right. That's about a different what? story. No, uh, when you was leaving. I thought you were crying, but no, somebody oh, else no, cried when no, you were some, leaving. Somebody, somebody, somebody else cried, yeah. Somebody that uh, blocked me on Facebook. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I, I noticed. Yeah. I, I mean, you won't ever see this, but yeah, I noticed. Yeah. <laughs> Someone blocked you on Facebook? I'll tell you offline. Okay. Um. So, Joy, do you have anything to plug before we get out of here? Oh, I will say that person was on the podcast before. I'll say that. Okay. That's a lot of episodes, dude. That is a lot of episodes. That's true. <laughs> Which one? Actually, honestly, more more people may have blocked me. Actually, nice. I, I can think of someone else that blocked me, too. Yeah, there's been, yeah, there's been somebody else. There's two now. <laughs> I thought about the second person. There's two now who's appeared on this podcast that has blocked you now. <laughs> that that I am aware of. I should just, right. like, I should just randomly text, randomly text some people to see, like, if that shit bounces back. 
It's funny because those both of those two people, I'm still friends with on Facebook. <laughs> of course, yeah, yeah. <laughs> well, you know, I mean, they're obviously they're blocking Chad for a reason. Yeah, they are. They are. Nice. But do you have anything you want to plug before we get out no. of here, Joy? No, not that I can think of. I really appreciate you coming on. Had some fun. Had some laughs. You're a ball of yes, joy. Yes, thank you for being on. Appreciate you. <laughs> really? Oh, Did Matt, you really Matt, Matt didn't hear that. Yeah, 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 Matt didn't hear that. Well, what if someone said to you, you're a ball of Chad? What would that mean? No, I've been called a hanging Chad, and not in a sexual way. <laughs> I forgot about that's what Chad meant. And then now if Chad means something so much worse now. You're such a Chad. Oh, really? Yeah. Yeah. Oh. Yeah. My name's always been good. I mean. Yeah. It's not. It's not been great times for the for the name Chad. I'm mm. gonna be honest. Well. It's rough times. Yeah. Ch- change yeah, it. These these Chads, these Karens. Yeah, these are not good times for y'all. That is. That is very true. I run into many Karens at work sometimes. <laughs> Don't we all? Names Don't. or actual Karens? Don't we all? Yeah. Mm-hmm. Thank you so much for listening. Please rate, like, and review our podcast on your platform of choice. If you have any feedback, please email us at weusedtotalkpod at gmail.com. Subscribe to us on YouTube and follow us on X, formerly Twitter, Instagram, TikTok, and Threads. It's a thing. We don't use it, but it is a thing at We Used to Talk Pod. Follow me on Letterbox at BOW1213, Matt at Mr. King0257, and come back next week. Well, actually, before I even say that, the week after next, we are going to um, have a friend of the show come back. And we're going to do a Bollywood movie. Another one. Our third movie for the pod. Well, technically fourth. Because you did one offhand there, Matt. And um, Matt and I are going to start it right now as soon as this episode's over. That way, you know, we can we can be done with it within the next two weeks. Because those movies yes. are long as fuck. Really? Yes. How oh. long is it? I've never actually sat down and watched They're a quite long. Movie. They have intermissions. That's how long they are. Oh. Yeah. And it's like, wow. it's like you're watching like two or three movies at once. In a row. <laughs> like it, that's, it's like so many storylines that like technically could be their own movie. <laughs> oh, wow. Yeah. It's a lot. So yeah, start now. Yeah. But um, come back next week for our 150th episode when we review Matt. Pulp Fiction. Oh, or Friday, right. I forget. <laughs> it's gonna be one of those movies. We'll, right, we'll flip. Right. A, we'll flip a coin. Big difference yeah. between those. I mean, we oh. we will flip a coin. <laughs> like always, I don't know if it was a good episode. I don't know if it was a bad episode. But whatever you think about it, talk about it at work. Thank you for listening. Yeah.